Let's talk about some politics stuff, can we, for a minute, before we go into the main event? The main event. Um, <laughs> let's talk about it. So, uh, Biden. Oh, is this where I say I'm wrong? Today is, today is his birthday. He's uh, 81 today. I didn't do my birthday shout out, shout outs, but yeah. Cool. <laughs> Biden, I missed him. Biden my is, bad. My bad, Biden, I think he's 82. 81, 81. Um, his birthday is today. Yep. Um, and he is facing a historic situation for an incoming president. Yes, having having a death, uh, uh, uphill battle as far as he looks like he's he's projected to lose right now. He's getting killed with um millennial voters. A oh, lot of man. it, a lot of it has to do with his foreign policy. People are not feeling his foreign policy aid. A variety of other different things. So. All right, we can we can give our weekly predictions on who we think is going to become president, but um, I think that it's important to look at the money behind it. So, lobbying, extremely yep. important. Over ten billion dollars, they said, will be spent this cycle on campaign contributions and lobbying. Um, and this is what people I think don't fully understand. It's not a democracy. It's it's a paid for. <laughs> it's paid for by the highest bidder. And public. whoever has the most money purchases a candidate and the candidate does whatever they want them to, to do. And if they go against what they want them to do, then they fund their opposition's campaign or they create a smear campaign and they get them out of there. And this happens in local uh, politics, yes. state level politics, national politics and the president. There's no there's no different. But it's interesting um, who do you think is the number one lobbying group um, in politics last year, 2022? It's in terms of money being spent out? Who spent the most money on, the money on lobbying? Not So campaign contributions and lobbying are different. Are two different things. But um, yeah. who do you think spent, and anybody in the chat can- That's a great question. Can, can answer as well. Who do you think, what group, what, what group spent the most money in lobbying politicians in 2022. Can we do a family feud style? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna go, <laughs> it's probably gonna be third on the board. Right, I'm gonna go first and let me see if it's number one. And all right. No. No, that is was, it on yeah, the top I five? I think they're though. third. Is it in the top five? Um, you know, it's like, not, look, it is not in the top five. Not they're the not in the top five, five anymore? I oh gotta ask, me and you go. Um, Hey, Steve, how you doing? Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go with Pharma, Big Pharma. Farmer is in the top five, but goes. they're not. They're okay. not. They're not number one. Okay. So let's 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 go through. This is a good game show. Yeah, it is. It is for sure. Let's go through the top ten. Actually, one, two. Am I in the ten? Who'd you say? I said NRA. NRA. I didn't think they would be number one. I think I know that they are probably in the ten. They're not in the ten. Number number ten is uh, NCTA, the Internet and Television Association. Okay. okay. They spent fifteen million last year on lobbying. Mm -hmm. Uh, number nine is Comcast. Okay. Um, Interesting. Media. Number eight is Business Roundtable. Okay. Number seven is Amazon. American Medical Association is number six. Facebook. Um, good folks over at Meta. Blue Cl Blue Cross Blue Shield. I know who number yeah. one is. Uh, Apple got to be in there. Manufacturers for American Hospital Association. A lot of healthcare companies. Yeah, yeah. By yeah. the way, no, it's the trend. Um, number two, no, number three is the pharmaceutical and research okay. lobby. Mm -hmm. Number two is uh, U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Number one, really? U.S. Chamber of Commerce is two. The number one, very okay. surprising. The number one lobby group last year, National Association of Realtors. Wow, really? The National Association of Realtors lobby to the tune of $84 million last year. And like I said, there's hundreds of millions of dollars that spent on campaign contributions, different things like that. But as far as lobbying, the National Association of Realtors were number one in 2022. Who knew? I definitely oh, I, I thought that. I knew number one. I know. I was Xander said he knew. I didn't know. He knew. <laughs> <laughs> He's a bright young know. man. Maybe, maybe that's maybe. <laughs> Do you do, what? What are your thoughts on why realtors That's would be spending crazy. so much money? Are they are they threatened? Are they do they absolutely? I mean, because if you look at Zillow, Redfin, when they tried to push that wave, also BlackRock, Vanguard, Blackstone are now Line becoming competitors. Mm -hmm. 
and people are more afraid interest rates are high shout out to all the realtors who listen i appreciate you just close your ears real quick and when the internet is saying now is not a good time to buy while the realtors are saying it's a great time to buy you have divergence and thought versus what's best for the business so i think they need to lie because they are in fear for sure about if things are going to be more stable like for the first time in i don't know maybe 10 15 years i don't even see people excited to buy a house and the crazy part is if interest rates go lower housing prices are going to soar mm -hmm. and we're going to have a bidding war again yeah. so you're stuck either now you have to pay more on the mortgage side and you're going to be ate up by interest or you have to wait until the interest rates drop but then the cost of the house is going to go up yeah so that that's really fascinating i didn't know that so the interesting thing a lot of people put um they thought that apac was going to be up there and that is the uh, american israel public affairs committee um and you know they spent in 2018 they spent 3.5 million dollars on lobbying which is a relatively mm -hmm. it seems small but it's a relatively large amount for foreign policy but through campaign contributions this is this is where it kind of gets tricky so it's been reports that this year they're going to spend a hundred million dollars to defeat five candidates so they, they're, mm. they're, they're spending a hundred million dollars this year on five candidates i think they call them the uh jamal bowman's part of that crew the crew <laughs> yeah. um what, what is, what's the name oh, of it can we God. research that research department gotcha, gotcha. these are extremely they, they're more liberal this, this is a, a very liberal um crew in the democratic party they've taken um a pro-palestinian stance so they're, they're spending a war chest of almost allegedly that's what they were been reporting of 100 million dollars so it's interesting to see how different groups fund different political agendas different political yeah. parties different different candidates um and we even wall street last presidential cycle spent 2.9 billion dollars on lobbying and campaign contributions 47 percent of wall street's money who do you think wall street spent the most money on another crowd engagement who if wall street spent almost three billion dollars for the last presidential cycle who would you assume got the the lion's share of their their spending i think this I is a trump i think that they spent it evenly the squad is the name of that squad, uh that yeah. democratic squad, yeah. uh, i just had i was waiting for the squad. You. I, had, I had it for you 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 said that they you said you're going with trump ian yes that's what i'm gonna go for survey if they, says if, if they said 3.5 if they said 3 billion i think 1.5 and 1.5 they have interest on both sides close they spent 47 percent with republicans and 53 percent with democrats the number one really? person that got the most money was joe biden with 74 million dollars i was close i can divide this one every two. <laughs> <laughs> Blue. So, so so that's that's interesting because a lot of people you know they just automatically assume that wall street is always going to be in in favor of the of the republicans like you said they split their bets every yeah, any, 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 any any intelligent um political uh lobby party always splits their bets you have to split their. Yeah. you have to split your bets that's how you that's how you really lobby efficiently you, you you give money to republicans and you give money to democrats gotta hedge it that's that's what you have Everyone's to do but yeah, but, the, but wall street the, the, i didn't learn this until i started working in finance wall street usually favors democrats that's true and and the stock market has done better under democratic leadership too so that that makes sense a boom with clinton boom with obama um rest in peace to jimmy carter's wife God rest her soul. Rest in peace. Uh, but yeah, normally under a democratic regime, things do float a little bit better for the stock market. Yeah. Somebody said, when do you work in finance? <laughs> That's crazy. Rashad. Rashad. No, this is the first time viewers. Shout out to everybody who's the first time viewers. Shout out to the first time viewers. First time viewers. Yeah. This is how you used to feel in 2020 when I used to go crazy. Like what? <laughs> Shout out to the, well, if you, if you, if you type my name in Google, it comes up as American basketball player. So true. That's yeah. fire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So some people might not know my background. Um that's the 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 bot said you said it in 40 episodes straight. So they said he must be American basketball player. Yeah. But I just I just think that it's interesting to um to really look at that because you know when you talk about politics, it's like, well, what does this have to do with business? Everything. Everything. Business is funding politics. And yeah, this is extremely important because when you talk about taxes, the politicians make that. 
when you when yes. you talk when you're talking about um government regulation mm -hmm. when you're talking about everything that has to flow through business for business to actually be able to run is governed by government mm -hmm. so it would make sense that business would have a strong interest in politics and vice versa mm -hmm. and it it would also make sense that every single interest group would have a strong interest in politics so i say that to say this is something that black people have to start to fully understand right yeah this is if your top priority is furthering your agenda well the only way to do that is through money so it's can't like it. yeah i mean you can't really you can't get mad at what apac is doing that's their priority obviously the name yeah. of their, their their pro israel situation so of course they're going to do everything possible to be on 100 side of israel that would make sense because they're looking out for their own interest and every single person does that every group does that Absolutely. so what we have i think we haven't fully understand how politics work we've been told to just vote Mm -hmm. Like we got, we got put on the vote path where it's like, okay, you can vote your way into, um, prosperity or you can vote your way into change and or we'll you can, that. or you can march your way into change. And what ends up happening is that votes are important because you do, you do need to elect a candidate, but the people with the money, they use voting blocks. Yep. So we are a large voting block mm -hmm. and we usually vote for one particular party. So and give away our vote for free, not to cut you off. Exactly. So they'll yep. use our voting block because it's important to get the candidate elected, but the candidate will never do anything for per said voting block because mm -hmm. there's never any financial pressure on said candidate. So now you have a cycle of small groups of money that use voting blocks to get a candidate elected. And then they put money in the candidate and they threaten the candidate and the candidate does what they want them to do and Soft persuasion and if not so and then so i say that to say we do have a voting block that's important but we don't have economic power when it comes to finances so it would be beneficial to work on the economic power structure with the voting block now you at in a position to actually start to see some things happen that are in your best interest and yeah. you have to be a, you have to be selfish on a certain point. Can't always look out for everybody else's interest because nobody's looking out for your interest. 